Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16 has been out for about a business week at this point and I've been using it primarily on my 13 Pro Max that I have here as well as my iPad Pro. I wanted to share some new features that I didn't cover in the initial what's new video as well as the overall experience and your experience based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video there's over 200 comments and over 11,000 votes. I've taken all of that information to compile the best understanding of what it's like to use so far. Now we'll talk about whether or not you should install it a little bit later and when to expect the updates yourself for public beta testing. Now, as far as new features, if we go into settings, go to general and then go to software update. If you have automatic updates turned on, you'll see we now have a new option for install system and data files. This says updating to the latest version of iOS may include automatic updates to security configuration and system data files. Some updates may only take effect once you restart your phone. So this is a new option you can turn on and off, but only in automatic updates. So I expect this to change, although they've done this before and changed it later on when it came out to the public. So this may change or may not. Now, when you're charging your phone, many people have been seeing different messages. Maybe they have cases on their phone or something else. They'll actually get a message in their settings under battery that told them that it started and stopped charging based on the overall heat of the battery. So the phone is just letting you know that it's doing that prior to this. It did that anyway, but it was just letting you know from now on and you can see what it looks like here. So I haven't received the message myself, but quite a few people have. Also, when you go into photos, there's something new there as well. So if we go into photos, you'll see here's from last week's follow-up. If we select a couple of them, a new menu option appears in the bottom right. We've got three dots, tap on those three dots, and it says adjust location, adjust date and time, add to album, slideshow, hide, duplicate, and copy. This is something that's new in photos that just makes it easier to manage this overall. Also within photos, if maybe we go to a video, so let me find a video. Now within a video, if I press and hold on an object, I can copy and paste that object into something else. That works in videos, not just photos. So you'll see I copy and pasted the iPhone, maybe we play a little bit further press and hold, and then we can copy and paste. It is a little bit buggy. It's an early beta, so you can expect things like that. But if we press and hold, maybe I want this object, we can press and hold on it and copy and paste. It works better in some different videos than others, and it usually works once and then stops working. But it is a new feature that should be better later on once it's released to the public. Now, when you unlock your phone, you can unlock it in landscape on iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max phones. So if we turn the phone, rotate it sideways, it will see me and then unlock. So we'll try it again. It saw me and then unlocked. This only works on 13 Pro and Pro Max right now or iPhone 13 series phones, I should say, but maybe it will be coming to different phones in the future, but it works on the latest ones. There's also a new option for phone calls. If we go into settings, go to accessibility, under accessibility, go to touch. So if we scroll down, go to touch, under touch, scroll down, and you'll see lock to end phone calls or lock, lock to end calls you can press the side button to end the current call. So that's something new under accessibility. Also, when you're playing music, so let's go ahead and connect our AirPods here. So I'll take one of them out. We'll connect the AirPods. We're in music, and if we go into the control center, in the upper right of the thing that's playing here, the music that's playing, you'll see that we have AirPods. Tap on the AirPods, and we have different options to connect to. So that's new. And then also, if we go back to the home screen, pull down the lock screen, you'll see in the little music player, there's also AirPods. So it's the same sort of setup, just letting you know what's connected. If you have AirPods 3 connected, it will show those. If you have AirPods Max, it will show those. So that's something different. Tap on it, and then again, you can select what you want to connect to. Now, there's quite a few more features that I'll mention in other videos as well. Every single day, I see more and more. Many of you have sent me different features, so we'll talk more about those in future videos. Now, the overall experience, so far, it's very functional. It works fine. You've been seeing me use it throughout this video, but there's definitely some bugs here and there. So I wanted to talk about those. Apple's aware of some of them, as in their notes in the feedback app. There's many, many known issues. There's over 47 different categories of issues, actually. And within those categories, there's multiple issues. So Apple is definitely aware that this is an early beta, and that's to be expected with early beta. So definitely there's issues. If you're running the beta, make sure you're reporting those in feedback if you haven't already. The first thing to note, though, is battery is quite bad. With an early beta, that's typically going to happen. 
battery is not the focus. And if we go into settings and go over to battery, I'll just share my battery. My current battery health is still at 100% and that hasn't changed. But if we go into the last 10 days, Here's my battery from yesterday. I had two hours and 54 minutes of screen on time, three hours and 43 minutes of screen off time. And I used about 60% of my battery. It's been pretty bad and the phone is getting quite warm. This is being reported by many people. So usually battery is not a focus early on and the phone is quite hot to the point where I was recording outside or setting up to record and almost didn't record outside because the brightness was going down like it would on iPhone 12s. Now currently it's 81 degrees Fahrenheit in the United States where I live in the current area and it would actually ramp the brightness down and then create a problem. So right now it's working okay but for a while it was getting really hot. It is quite warm right now but it's definitely hotter than it normally is. So if that's a concern just keep that in mind. As far as iPad OS 16, well, it's surprisingly stable, but battery life isn't great. So if we go into settings, you'll see my battery life from yesterday it was two hours and four minutes of screen on time, 32 minutes of screen off time, and I used about 40% of my battery. I'm getting about four to five hours of screen on time, and it's about the same as I was getting with iOS 15, which isn't great. However, everything else is quite stable. So if we go into stage manager, turn it on here, go into Safari, it works fine. It's nice and fast. You can resize windows without a problem, and it works really well and fluidly on the M1 iPad Pro. However, of course, it's not available on all devices, but so far it's pretty impressive as far as its stability and speed. Speed. Now, another thing that's problematic, at least for me and many others, is clearing notifications. So if we go into our notifications, maybe I want to clear them here, clear all of them at once, tap. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. Sometimes it crashes. Other times it happens right away like it just did. It seems to be an issue here and there. I'm also hearing quite a bit of issues with music where it's crashing for a lot of people. So quite a few people are having music crash over and over. And again, like I said, it's to be expected. It's an early beta, but it's definitely problematic. Now, as far as the storage bug, I really wouldn't worry too much about that. If we go into our settings general and iPhone storage, because again, it's an early beta, none of these things are going to be a big concern in a beta. So if we wait for it to load, sometimes it loads very slowly and the storage being used can be 20 gigs or more. And it's just a known at this point. So you'll see iOS is using 6.42 gigabytes and we'll wait for system data to load. You'll see here we're using 11.73 gigabytes for system data and that's pretty much okay. Anywhere between zero and 20 gigabytes. It can vary greatly from day to day, from hour to hour. That's why they bury it down in the bottom of phone storage because it's something that it can use as needed, but it can vary. And I've heard some people, like I said, with the earlier versions of iOS, iOS 15.6 that had up to 150 gigabytes used. And by syncing that with iTunes, it seemed to fix that for them, but there's definitely still some bugs that's going to be addressed probably later on. Hopefully they'll give us a way to clear that out a little bit as well. Quite a few things that you've said have to do with the lock screen notifications, not stacking properly. Also, if you're running test flight apps, maybe you're using testing apps, they won't show up properly until you turn on developer mode. That's a new mode in settings. So if we go into our settings here and we go down to privacy and security, scroll down at the bottom, we have developer mode and under developer mode, you can turn this on and then you can run your test flight apps. That makes sense. You're a developer. You want developer mode turned on so you can test those apps. Also, some people are saying they're having issues with the wallpaper going into dark mode. So sometimes it won't show in dark mode and apps will show in dark mode and other parts won't. So if we turn on dark mode here, you'll see this isn't a dark mode wallpaper, but if we go into settings, it's working okay. But in other locations, it's not working okay. And again, it's an early beta. There's going to be some bugs here and there. One major issue is notes are disappearing for some people. So if you rely on notes, sometimes they're disappearing, just not syncing properly. And then also there's RAM management issues going into different apps, whether that be YouTube loading again or other apps loading again, that seems to be an issue. And then the issue we have all the time that a lot of people have is mobile banking apps, not working properly again. I've heard this over and over from many people. And that happened with previous betas, iOS 15 betas, iOS 14, 13, 12 betas. That seems to be an ongoing issue. And so far it's an issue with this update. Typically that won't be resolved until September when it releases to the public. Now, if you're wondering when iOS 16 beta two will be out, typically that's two to three weeks away. So at the time of this video, I would expect it probably 
on the 20th or 27th of June, and then we'll have following betas usually within two weeks, and then they'll speed up to a weekly cycle. Apple said that the public beta will be out in July, and that seems to be around when we think the time of beta three will be out. So when it comes out, of course, I'll make sure you're, you're aware of that and I'll do separate videos on those and everything else. But typically we expect it in July, it could be late July, it could be early July. It's just when Apple feels it's ready enough to be used by public beta testers. So at this point, we don't know. As far as iOS 15.6 betas, well, I would expect beta three this coming week, whether it be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, sometime early next week, I would expect 15.6 betas if you're running those. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16 beta one, typically I would recommend against it. If you're worried about any critical apps or anything else, and you don't have an extra device, I would probably hold off. Wait until it's more stable with the public beta. I would not install the developer beta early on on your main device, especially if you have critical apps. Usually I highly recommend against that, and Apple does as well. So this is something that is good so far, but has issues and bugs. In fact, today alone, I've restarted it three times. So there's definitely some issues. As far as performance overall, it seems to be performing okay, but it's not without its bugs, like I said. For an early beta, performance is quite good, whether that be scrolling, going into a different app, so maybe we go into weather, you'll see it didn't load yet. Give it just a moment, there we go. But going into different apps sometimes are a little bit slow and stuttery, and there is lag throughout, but the performance in general with, with opening different apps, whether that be Spotify or something else, seems to be about normal or what you would expect. So it seems to be okay with that. That's the first time I've opened Spotify since booting this phone today. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the YouTube community poll and take a look at some of your comments and what you had to say. At the time of this video, there's over 11,000 votes. There's 20% of you using iOS 16 beta one, six percent of you are using iOS 15.6 beta two, 65 percent are on 15.5 or earlier, two percent are using 14.8 or earlier, and seven percent are using Android. And thanks to everyone who voted. Now let's take a look at some of the comments. I have some of your comments in front of me on my iPad. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you had to say. Jeremy Lee said, using iOS 16 beta one on my iPhone 13. I've been experiencing slight RAM management issues, recent apps keep refreshing, and buggy wallpaper management. I actually had the buggy wallpaper manager on my 13 Pro Max as well. I had it right before when I was trying to set the wallpaper for this video, so I just forgot to mention it. But app compatibility and overall performance is quite good for the first beta. I don't regret installing it. Tiernan Flynn said, the only two problems I have had is horrid battery life, both with my iPhone 12 and iPad Air 3rd gen. And the Photos app keeps crashing when I make a lot of edits. Other than that, I haven't had any notable issues so far. And so the overall experience is going to be very different depending on who you ask. Zombie Soul said, using iPhone 13 Pro, phone gets hotter than usual, a battery drains faster, YouTube landscape mode turns the opposite direction than the original way it did, pictures and message app crashes, freezes, and turns black, the phone refuses to restart unless I use Siri to restart it, HomePod minis won't turn up or switch audio to TV when the YouTube advertisement plays, then switches back when video comes back on. Wallpaper doesn't change unless I do it from settings and go to the wallpaper. There's some other issues as well. And so lots of little bugs here and there, and it's really going to depend on your device, what apps you're using and what you're doing. Valerie Adrew said, and hopefully I'm saying that name properly, iOS 16 beta on iPhone 12 regular, no huge system ending bugs, but like other people, I've seen the phone heat up and the lock screen editing shows signs that it's still early in its implementation. Otherwise the beta is super stable and what with what we have, I'm really looking forward to the full release. Daniel Wainwright says on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, some banking apps don't work with iOS 16. There's a bug where you can't change the voiceover voice and a couple of lock screen glitches. Other than that, it's been perfectly stable for me. My battery life has been a tiny bit worse, although not noticeable and still seems to get me through the day, which I think this is actually the exception as far as the battery life goes. Robert O'Brien says iOS 16 beta one on my 13 Pro Max, my daily driver. No major bugs, however, there are quite a few. Wallpaper issues for the home screen, battery drainage has been shocking, charging every night at around 40 to 50%, and then all of a sudden it dies by 4 p.m. Lock screen notifications stack doesn't work properly, keyboard sound and haptics stop working every now and again, and when playing games, the screen starts skipping quite a bit. When I turp on, turn on sleep focus mode and then turn it off, it automatically reverts to personal. Every now and again, personal focus mode randomly turns on. These are just to name a few looking forward to the video. And like I said, many people are going to experience many different bugs, but make sure you report that in the feedback app.
Eleanor McCrimmon says iOS 16 beta 1 on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Battery drains faster than normal, which I expected, and the only issue I've had so far is a system crash earlier this morning. Nothing else so far. Stephen D said, I tried it and everything has worked well until I noticed my constant monitoring glucose app stopped working. It would crash every time I tried to open it and that's kind of important. So I had to use DFU mode to go back to 15.6. And so that's one of the reasons I said earlier on, you probably don't want to install this if you have any major apps that are important. Otherwise it seems to be okay, but typically I recommend against installing it on anything other than maybe a secondary device that you have laying around. And so that's everything with iOS 16 beta one. It's pretty good for an early beta. I'd say it's better than maybe iOS 14 or 15. Sometimes they're very good. Sometimes they're not. It just depends on the overall features and how far along Apple's developed it. But so far it seems okay. Sometimes it gets better with beta two. Sometimes it actually gets a little bit worse. Usually by beta three, it's much better though. But let me know if you've found anything else I haven't mentioned in the comments below, as far as new features, or maybe some bugs you didn't hear in this video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, if you've made it to the end of this video, I'd love to hear if you'd like me to continue to film outside when I can, or if you prefer the indoor videos, I'd love to hear from you there as well in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.